his first season swimming with the London Roar. He won back in match number three. Certainly that's a big upgrade. And Rossetti all the way over there in lane number one at the very top of the screen, picking up on that same cue from Stevens. Already out pretty good. Shields likes to swim that middle 100. That's where he is so strong. He's out in 24-8. Rossetti was 24-4 going out. He'll pick up some momentum off of that women's 200 butterfly. He is way out there. And Shields told Mark yesterday, you know, Mark asked him, could you see anybody? He said, oh yeah, I can see some. I can see them all. I've, he can definitely see Rossetti. Boy, Rossetti is out fast. He's 52-6 going out. Almost a full second ahead of Tom Shields. Man, he looks so good. And again, that's probably one of the biggest differences with ISL is typically the top three swimmers at the international level find themselves right there in the middle, three, four, five. And you can kind of use your peripheral vision. You're not always seeing somebody like Rossetti way out there in lane number one. We'll see if Shields can try to track him down because Rossetti's got a half second lead headed into the final 50. Well, Shields out split him there by a couple of tens, but nothing really drastic on out-splitting Rossetti. Rossetti's getting tired, no doubt about it, but I'm I'm not sure Shields has enough to go by him here that last 25. Great turn, though, by Shields. He's tired, but he's in first on the left side of the screen. Morimoto making a surge as well, and Morimoto trying to get it at the end for London, and Morimoto snatches it away and gets the win for the roar. Oh, my goodness. What a final 15 meters, and Brendan said he says, how did that happen, folks? Set the American record in this event a season ago in Budapest going 148.66. Second yesterday in the Hunter Butterfly, Sam Collegially at Cal. Talked about Diaceto and the path that he is on after a disappointing performance in Tokyo. Already won the 200 breaststroke and the 200 IM. This shows you how important it is to have well-rounded pieces like a Diaceto when you're trying to get athletes on your team to really score a lot of points for your team. Yeah, a lot of pick, people picked set, though, including myself, to win gold in at least the 400 IM and perhaps even the 200 IM, win a medal in the 200 butterfly. He didn't even come close to that. In fact, he didn't even final in the 400 IM, his best event. Tom Shields. We'll have to kind of do it from behind. He didn't have a great start. Seto looking good, 53 flat going out. He was 28 flat that second 50. And nobody really close to that. Shields was 28-6, Bernie. He was down at fourth position, actually dropped one position. So he'll have to do it from behind. You can see him right there in the middle with that yellow cap. 
Zepto looking really good right now. Four of Ben wins yesterday by the Tokyo Frog Kings. Seto had half of them trying to get that fifth win. I'm not sure anybody's gonna catch Daya Seto here. Yeah, 28-2 there. Shields 28-9. He's trying to make a run, but Seto's following up a great day that he had yesterday with those two big wins, and he's gonna win the two on a fly here. Similar to yesterday, Daya Seto just pressed the gas from the moment the bell rang and Seto gets the win at 150-68. Shields will finish second, Martinez third. Jackpot time in this event, 4.4 seconds. Expected to score all sorts of points. Uh, I think Haley Flickner wins this event and I think you're gonna see a lot of jackpots here. Burning a lot of jackpots because you've got an, an empty lane as well. So whoever wins this race will pick up those points as well, so you know that Callie is really depending on Flickner here to do her job. Bianchi that looks really good early on in the left side, but we've seen Flick really be patient in her approach. You'll see that in the, the 400 freestyle. We'll see it in the 400. I will see it right here as well. Flickner was third there, 28-5 going out. Bianchi really quick that first 50, 27-8, and now Licking her starting to build this first 100. You can just get a feeling that as she goes along in this race, she gets stronger and stronger. She's done that her entire career. She's done that in every 400 she has swum. And now she's gone from third to second, five one hundredths of a second behind Bob Bianchi. But the biggest story for the Condors at the moment is Catherine Savard finds herself Really not in the mix for a top three finish again. It is really critical that not only you win, but your teammate is as high up as possible. Yeah, now she has taken that lead. Just what we thought, and you're right, Bernie, the, the jackpots will start to pop up here. The jackpot time, by the way, is 4.8 seconds. So 131.6 there at the wall. Now she's built a whole second lead of Bianchi, who's now fallen to third. Oh, and even better news is Catherine Servard is moving up in lane number six. She's into the top three with Flick in her turning, leading with 25 meters to go. And her teammate at the moment is chasing second. She went from sixth to fourth and now second for Savard. Kelly's going to go one, two. Oh, this is huge early on. Flickener gets the win and Savard out touches Rosendahl Bach. One, two for Kelly. Check this final underwater. Pretty shallow turn. 
been struggling. Who wants it? Only stuff in front. Bianchi got to make a late challenge. McKinnis there for Tokyo as well. Bianchi's in for the chance. McKinnis, Kidrick on the wall. McKinnis gets it. Tokyo.